this is George Committee and today we are going to solve part 2 of uh, this question and it will involve deflection checks and also checks on web bearing and buckling so welcome ladies and gentlemen the question of the day is the simply supported beam in figure 4.11 supports uniformly distributed characteristic dead and imposed loads of 5 kN per meter each, as well as a characteristic imposed point load of 30 kN at the mid span of the beam. Assuming the beam is fully laterally restrained and there is nominal torsional restraint at supports, select a suitable universal beam section in grade S 275 steel to satisfy bending and shear considerations. The sixth step is deflection checks and in this case the central deflection will be given by 5 WL raised to the power of 4 divide this by 384 EI plus WL cubed divide this by 48 EI. 5 WL raised to 4 over 384 EI is deflection due to the UDL, the imposed load of 5 kN per meter. WL cubed over 48i is due to the point load at the center. That is the imposed load of 30 kN. Therefore, the total deflection will be given by deflection due to the UDL, the imposed UDL plus the imposed point load. And therefore, this is going to be 5 times W is 5 kN per meter and L, the span, is 10 raised to the power of 4, 10 meters. We are going to divide this by 384 times the elastic modulus of steel is usually 205 kN per square millimeter. So we need to convert it to kN per square meter. 1 meter is equivalent to 1,000 millimeters, therefore uh, millimeters squared. From millimeters squared to meter squared, we are going to multiply by a million. That is 1,000 times another 1,000. So multiply this by 10 raised to the power of 6 times the second moment of area of this section from appendix B is 21,500 centimeters raised to 4. We need to convert that to meters raised to 4. That is, we divide this by 10 raised to the power of 8, which is the same as 10 raised to the power of negative 8. Then we add 2 W, which is the point imposed load of 30 kN, multiplied by L cubed. And L is 10. Therefore, 10 cubed we divide this by 48 times the elastic modulus of steel, 205 kN per square millimeter. We convert that to kN per square meter. That is multiplied by a million. Then we multiply this by the second moment of area of this section, which is 21,500 cubic centimeters. Convert that to cubic meter. Multiply by 10 raised to the power of negative 8. And this is going to give us a deflection of 0 0.0148 meters plus 0 0.0142 meters, which is uh, giving us a total of 0 0.029 meters, which when we convert to millimeters, Multiply this by a thousand, that is going to be 29 millimeters. 
And we know that for a beam carrying a plaster, for a beam carrying plaster, the maximum deflection will be given by span divided by 360 mm, 300 divided by 360 and therefore in terms of millimeters our span is 10 meters converting to millimeters dot pi by a thousand then divide this by 360 so when you do that you find that the maximum deflection for this particular beam is uh, 27.8 millimeters and you will find that the maximum deflection that is the design uh, that is the deflection total deflection at the center have exceeded the maximum deflection which means that a larger section can be chosen but in this case there is not uh, too much of deflection because it's only 2.8 millimeters which is not too large to result to any uh, damage on this particular section so in terms of diffraction that is the far we can go so we are done with the sixth step that is diffraction check the seventh step step number seven happens to be checks on web bearing and backholding so we go to checks on web buckling and bearing. So the reason as to why this check has to be carried out is to determine whether the section requires what we call web stiffeners which will stiffen the web preventing any sway or any buckling or any movement so we need to check that and see whether this section requires a provision of what we call web stiffeners and in this case we are going to assume that the beam is supported on bearings whose width or breadth is 100 millimeters so that means that uh, we assume that the supports of this beam have got a thickness or a breadth of 100 millimeters so that is our assumption 100 millimeters and this is the beam standing on those supports Having said that, the web bearing at supports, so we go to what we call web bearing at supports, we need to calculate what we call the bearing resistance of unstiffened beam. And bearing resistance, that is PBW, bearing resistance of unstiffened beam, is given by B1 plus NK into T multiplied by PYW. And in this case, B1 is the breadth of the stiff bearing that is stiff bearing length length of the stiff bearing and our length of our bearing is a hundred millimeters therefore b1 is a hundred millimeters <clears throat> n is given by 2 plus 0 0.6 be over k be is the distance from the end of the bearing to the end of the beam member and in this case since our beam since our bearing is a flash with our beam our bearing is flash with the beam therefore be is zero in our case and therefore that makes this section to be zero giving us n to be two k 
is given by T plus R and T is the thickness of the fringe, R is the root radius of the section. And in this case, from appendix B of our section, the thickness of the fringe is 12.8 millimeters and the root radius for this section is 10.2, giving us 23 millimeters. So K is 23 millimeters. T is the thickness of the web and in this case the thickness of the this web from the tables is 7.8 millimeters. Then PYW is the design strength for the web and in this case it is equivalent to the design strength for the steel section that we are considering that is S275. Therefore the Bearing resistance of unstrained, unstiffened beam, that is PBW, will be given by B1, which is 100 millimeters, plus N, which is 2, times K, which is 23. Then we multiply that by 7.8 millimeters, which is a small t, that is the thickness of the web, times 275 newtons per square millimeters, which is the strength of the steel. And in this case, this is going to give us 313 times 10 raised to the power of 3 newtons. So when we convert that to kilonewtons, it is going to give us 313 kilonewtons. So when we compare this uh, PBW, which is 313 kilonewtons, and the shear force that we had already calculated, which was 99 kilonewtons, we find that PBW is greater than 99 kilonewtons, and therefore the section is okay. So PBW should always be greater than the shear force of the section for a beam section to be. To be suitable for a beam section to be suitable so that is uh, all about uh, all about pbw that is the bearing resistance of and stiffened web from there we need to call to calculate what we call contact stress at support contact stress at supports contact stress at supports so in this case PCS PCS is the compression resistance of short strut and PCS is given by B1 times 2 multiply by R plus T and we multiply all that by PY that is the design strength of the steel section so in this case <clears throat> we have our B1 as uh, 100 multiply that by 2 times RT we had R plus T being 23 millimeters then multiply that by 2 that gives us 46 then we multiply that by 275 that is the design strength of steel and this is going to give us pcs that is the compression resistance of a short strut to be equal to 1265 times 10 raised to the power of 3 newtons converting that to kilonewtons that is going to be 1265 Kilo newtons. This one is greater than 99 and therefore the section is suitable. The section is okay. Then from there we need to check the web buckling at the support. Web, web buckling at the support. Since this constant, that is 
can call this uh, alpha e which is the effective net area or what we call the modular ratio and this is this is given by the bearing length divided by 2 our bearing length is 100 millimeters we divide by 2 that gives us 50 millimeters and therefore this a uh, modular ratio should be less than 0.7 d and small d is the depth between fillets so from the tables the depth between fillets of our section is 360.5 millimeters therefore when you multiply 0 0.7 times 360.5 that is going to give us a 252 millimeters so you find that 50 millimeters is less than 252 millimeters and therefore the web buckling web buckling will be given by px and in this case px is buckling resistance of an unstiffened web so the buckling resistance of an unstiffened web is given by our modular ratio plus 0 0.7 d divide this by 1.4 d then multiply that by 25 times the constant multiplied by t thickness of the web divided by b1 plus nk into d that is the depth between fillet then you find the square root of that then multiply by pbw so this is going to be um <coughs> the modular ratio we have found it uh, to be 50 plus 0 0.7 d is 252 we divide this by 1.4 d and our d that is the depth between fillets is 360.5 360.5 that one should be multiplied by that one should be multiplied by 25 times the constant is 1 this constant is 1 Remember, that constant is given by 275 over Py raised to a half. Py is 275, so 275 over 275 is 1. So, times 1 times the thickness of the web is 7.8. Then, we divide this by B1 is 100 millimeters uh, plus Nk that is 2 times 23 that is 46 then you multiply by depth between fillets which is 360.5 so 360.5 then you find the square root of that so you multiply by pbw we had already calculated pbw which is 313 kilo newtons so multiply the whole of that by 313 so px is uh, going to give us um, 159 kilonewtons this one is greater than 99 kilonewtons and therefore the section is okay so this means that no web stiffeners are required at the supports so ladies and gentlemen that's how we go about a uh, design of this section. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button as well as the notification bell. See you in yet another lesson.